When the man of the people DNS from Worlds, we gotta inform the people. What's up, Disgenerates? It's the Disc Golf World. I'm Jefferson, and alongside me, as always, the one with all the holes in his game, Swiss Cheese. Recapping everything you need to know from round four of the World Championships. You already know I gotta thank all the Patreon and YouTube members first, though. Because without all you wonderful people, I wouldn't still be out here destroying my body at Ivy Hill. I don't know if that's too insensitive of a transition, but we're rolling with it. Matty O had to make the upsetting decision to drop out of Worlds after an ongoing right knee injury. In a post, he went on to say it's been nagging him since the day after the European Open, which has been causing lots of pain. Ivy Hill takes a toll on the body, and Matty O suffered the effects. He would go even further and pull out of Deglo so he can head into the playoffs healthy. Eliezra Middling also made the tough decision to DNF as she'd been dealing with a deep crackling callus. She's been playing through the pain since the Des Moines Challenge, and during her round, it got to the point it was so bad, she needed to stop altogether. Kona Montgomery was carted off the course today for a medical emergency. Turned out to be some sludge. We at the Disc Golf World hope everyone can heal up and return quickly. Brody Smith, on the other hand, didn't have an injury. Instead, was attacked. By bees, that is. As many pros have reported of getting stung. Not really here to complain about anything, just stating what happened as I had a traumatic experience where I may have screamed like a little girl when I got stung. But we're moving on from that. Trevor has confirmed that he was stung up to 15 times. To make matters worse, he's allergic, so not a good situation at all. Hopefully, all ended up okay, as his Twitter is still not active. Never would I think I would want to see a Brody Smith tweet more than right now. Well, at least now we can watch some FPO tomorrow. And on that note, Swiss, hit the people with the FPO recap. Beth at 69. I just told myself, you've got to will this one in there. Whatever you have, just will it in there. This man is unbelievable. This is what athletes live for. This is the moment. The stage was set for a back-and-forth battle, knotted up atop the leaderboard with World Championship prestige on the line, along with Ivy's manufactured OB, tight landing zones, and death putts with roll-away potential throughout. With two of the sport's dynamic players who have had to overcome past performances where they have underperformed in high-pressure situations in the past. Yes, Holland Hanley and Evelina Salonen have five wins on the season, one elite plus and a major. But for many fans, they are still better known for their past blow-up rounds on the course. Right or wrong? Certainly didn't stop people actually speculating a Kristen Tatar comeback like the European Open, which even while putting together the hot round on the day is still further back than that moment. PSA, if you're still that guy, just stop. Many fans in attendance were looking for a player to make a statement, or better yet, a battle with both playing their best. While the smart fans were just looking to see which player would handle the pressure of the moment, this daunting course, and who would best overcome their game's curtailments. Holland, despite the empty stomach, looked in control and poised to dominate with three straight birdies to start off her round, as the gallery buzzed with excitement. While Evelina's round could only have started off worse if she had stopped by at a Waffle House for breakfast. It began with an OB throw to start her round, followed with a two-putt from inside the circle with a two-stroke swing on the very first hole. She would bullseye the next hole, but still found herself down three strokes to Holland through the first three holes. From there, the lead would change between the two nine total times for the remainder of the round. That's more than the food options at Worlds. And for those of you that are not here, the total is five. All I gotta say is thank goodness for Uncrustables. I would love to say the lead changes were due to exceptional play at the top, but it wasn't. Rather, just the opposite. The two would have 10 total OB throws, two more that landed in Hazard, four missed C1 putts, six bogeys, and a double for good measure. Any moment one would gain a lead, they would simply lose it the very next hole. As they would finish 3-2 and two under with a late bogey on 17 from Evelina being the difference. The worst part? We just might have to live through this all over again. Only made worse by having to walk those same hills all over again. That being said, these two are pouring themselves into this moment. Fans saw more reaction from Evelina than we have seen in the past, including that self-imposed Charlie horse on 5. While Hanley has shown emotions of her own, despite the bad cop persona those aviators give off. With there being more than enough proof a single stroke lead not being enough, this race is still a pick em at best. So I'll go out on a limb and say give me Evelina. I guess for now, but it will probably change by the time the first fan asks me tomorrow. The rest of the leaderboard saw little change with the exception of the lower half of the top 10. 
Sure, Cat Merch closed the gap slightly, but we'll still need to match her best score on this track, and we'll also need some help from the two ahead of her. The bottom of the top 10 has a number of players in tight competition with a course that changes things quickly. All are battling for better paydays, possible player bonuses, and further recognition on the world stage. C. Gannon's 4-under moves her that much more closer to a possible top 5. Both Silva Sarnin and Lisa Fakus with under rounds on the day climbed into the top 10. Yet with names like Anakin Steen, Owen Scoggins, Paige Pierce, Emily Weatherman, all with wins on the season and still looking to jump in the top 10 with a better performance today, there is still plenty for every competitor to go out there and play for. Over on the MPO side, we finally saw glimpses of morality in Isaac Robinson as he went OB twice on hole 6 resulting in a double bogey only to follow it up with another bogey on 7. I mean, it's gotta be tougher to avoid all that fake OB than spelling his name. Okay, I don't know if that's true or not since I wasn't watching coverage, but man, that would be pretty embarrassing for Prodigy. While all that was going on, Nicholas Ansela started his round birdieing the first four holes, which included a 43-footer on hole three. He would pick up three more birdies to finish the front nine seven under. At this point, Isaac managed to fight his way back to even, but that six-stroke lead would be no more. Well, that was until the very next hole as Nicholas would find the OB on his approach only to bogey. Isaac would have a tap in birdie for the two-stroke swing and back into solo possession of the lead, which he continued to have picking up birdies in the next three holes. Nicholas did his best to stay in it with two birdies of his own, smashing a big 38-footer on hole 13 to not lose a stroke. He went on to park hole 15, but Isaac would do the same for the easy birds. Hole 16 is one of the few that Isaac elects to play for par. Needing to gain strokes fast, Nicholas took the aggressive line for the big roller through the OB like he did round 2, which did result in a birdie. Unfortunately, this time, his disc would curl up too early for a bogey, while Isaac walked in his par. Nicholas would snag the birdie on 17, getting that stroke right back, although it didn't matter as Isaac ended his round with the birdie on 18 for a 6-under giving him a three-stroke lead over Antela with one more round to play, and I don't think he wants a fourth runner-up trophy. After the round, Isaac was spotted on the putting green for a long time, and that was in all caps. Plus, it was after he waited until the very last person in the autograph tent. But come on, that probably had like four people in it. Joking, joking, he's in the lead. All the clueless people get in that line. Don't count out Calvin Heimberg as he would put up a 9 under as well, placing him on the lead card for the final day only 5 strokes back. And one back of him, you have Luke Taylor, who rounds out the lead card with an 8 down that included 5 OB strokes. I know he's missing the trees at this point. And that's everything you need to know from round 4 of the World Championships. And with that, tomorrow a World Champion will be crowned. Which makes this the last time you can comment who you think will win or your friends are allowed to call you a liar. And make sure to tune into the weekend wrap up tomorrow as we break down everything that happened this world championship. Oh yeah, in only about 15 minutes.